Alrighty. I think I have a list together with the two stroke oils I have available to test right now. Um, I'm going to try and do it in this order, in these ratios, just to make it simple. I'm trying to base it based on what people are asking for, just because, I mean, it's going to be, we'll work through the list, but uh, the, the more popular ones, I just started with, I think Schaefer's was a first request, and then HP2 was the next one. Um, Sabre was real popular, and then, uh, and then from there, I just kind of grouped it. However, uh, I just thought it was funny as everyone was requesting these blue oils, Schaefer, HP2, Sabre, um, the other Schaefer's. So I grouped it in a blue, and then I grouped it in a caster, and then I grouped it in a red. And that pretty much covers the majority of your two-stroke oils, or at least the ones that I have. I didn't even notice that they were all blue and red other than 927. But um, HP2 will be next. I'll try and make that video tomorrow. Uh, I've just been super busy like the last two days at work. I think I worked 12 hours both uh, yesterday and today. So I just hadn't had time to tear into uh, hadn't had time to clean up the trimmer and throw it all back together. After HP2, we got Saber. I have some Mariyama oil. It's FD rated, so we're testing it at two ratios. Um, there's some royal purple at the shop. I don't even know how or why that's there, but since it's available, I'll go ahead and try it out. I almost forgot to throw Schaefer 7000 on the list. Um, and then that's the end of my blue list. I grouped the two caster oils together. I got Maxima Caster 927, Clot Super Technic Plate, and then, uh, then we're, we're just going to go to Clot's R50, Bellray H1R, Motul 800, Redline, uh, VP. I think it's a multi-purpose two-cycle oil. It's full synthetic and it's FD rated, so it gets tested at two ratios. And then Red Armor, since it's FD rated, getting tested at two ratios. Um, and then, you know, same situation on all the tests. It's roughly 400 milliliters of fuel to fill the tank. I just let it blast at wide open throttle, checking RPM at idle, RPM at wide open throttle. Uh, Temperatures, again, some of these values are approximate. I think I've found a way to hit consistent temperatures with my probe. I had just placed it in kind of an odd spot there. That's why I think that the you're going to see that big variance. And then, you know, this is all anecdotal from here. But that's the current lineup. Um, had some additional requests. Someone wanted to see stable full synthetic because it's FD rated and it's easy to get a hold of. Someone wanted Lucas. Uh, I want to try Dominator. That's Amsoil product. I hadn't tried it. Had a request for Opti 2. Uh, I wrote purple purple in there just to remind me to bring the royal purple for the shop from the shop. I, I have that, so I don't know why I wrote it on there. Um, another Fewer requested Mystic. I have a buddy that wants to see Super Tech. I think he wants the outboard oil shown. Um, Motorex, that's I believe the KTM recommended uh, motorcycle oil. Ethanol Shield, that's one that I've seen in the stores. I believe it's full synthetic and FD rated. Other bike oils was. Uh, Maxima K2 and Super M. And then I wanted to get Klotz Technoplate because 
I believe they have a technoplate that's FD rated and I'd like just like to see how it performs. Um, I guess I'll address some other kind of questions and concerns and comments since this is a whole series. Uh, sealant, I'm going to try, uh, we noted that there was some leakage around the base and cylinder on the machine I'm doing the testing with. I'm going to try 518, that's a Permatex anaerobic gasket maker. I have it at the shop, I've just never used it as a as a base gasket uh, substitute. It, it kind of acts like glue sometimes, that's the reason why I haven't done it. Uh, a, there's a Permatex aviation gasket, it's like some sort of goopy sticky mess. I figure I'll try that because I think there's some of that in the old box in the shop. It's never going to get used on customer equipment. so. Might as well give it a shot here. And then there's a non-setting Honda Bond. Um, there's two motorcycle shops in town that should have should have it. I think Yamaha Bond is the same thing. And I believe they're both three bond products just labeled for manufacturers. Then Okay, other comments. Uh, I got told temp probe is inaccurate because it jumps around. Uh, it's, I think they call them a thermocouple. It's a little bead of a material that they know the resistance of. And uh, all it's doing when it's plugged into the meter is reading resistance and then converting that into a temperature readout. These are pretty accurate. Um, on top of that, it's a fluke meter, and the thermocouple is from fluke as well. And they have to keep all of their stuff to specific uh, specific degrees of accuracy. So uh, it's it's not. It's just the location of where I shoved the temperature probe is. I mean, it's not junk. It's just the location where I shoved the temperature probe was uh, probably a little different, and that's going to show a big variance. I mean, you know, measure it yourself and find out. You'll find out pretty quickly a half inch makes a tremendous difference on heat in uh, some locations on the, on the outside of those engines. Um, it said the test equipment was junk. It's an Echo SRM225 that has, it was a junk pile resurrection. So I'm not going to argue that. However, it's doing 8200 at full throttle. I believe spec is about 8500. I believe it's running longer line length than what the, uh, the factory guard would allow it to. And it's also got a gear head that's off of something else. So. These are two things that majorly contribute to the top RPM on uh, on a string trimmer. I mean, throw an extra three inches of line on each side, and you'll you'll watch this number plummet. Uh, just absolutely, it just absolutely drop off like you wouldn't believe. That's why I think uh, running them without a guard is you know somewhat foolish in situations because you're taking yourself out of the usable power area. But uh, on that same topic, the gearhead that doesn't belong in that equipment anyway is going out and I grabbed another junker from the shop to, uh, as a like parts donor for this test. And then I w uh, there was another comment that said uh, JSO FD is uh, at two percent is the perfect ratio. Uh, I'm not here to argue that 
all this testing is just information for the sake of information. Uh, I'm not trying to prove anything one way or the other. It's just, hey, look at this and do what you want with it. Um, you know, beyond that, I don't understand the... The, the conflict over a uh, fuel mix ratio it's um, I mean I am a small engine mechanic I have been for oh I don't know five to eight years somewhere in there and I tear this stuff down I tear the little two stroke equipment down all the time and yeah 50 to 1 a lot of times the equipment lives a long time, but my personal concern in relation to these ratios is uh, I'm not concerned about how it's functioning in an optimal scenario. Um, if you watch the channel, you know I primarily do uh, like hot rod work on chainsaws, so I'm concerned about how it's functioning in a non-optimal scenario, you know, excessive RPM, excessive load on the motor, high compression, uh, you know, it's a chainsaw, so how is it going to handle a dull chain? I know I'm testing in a string trimmer, but a lot of what you see is going to be applicable across the board on two-stroke equipment. If it's living at high RPM and it's well lubricated at high RPM, it's probably going to be fine uh, in something in a comparable scenario. So I believe we got plans. We got plans lined out. We got the additional lubricants I'm going to source, and this is. This is going to be a long, drawn-out thing. It's not like I'm going to have it done in a month. It's just not going to happen. I mean, that would be... This is already a ridiculous amount of two-stroke oil for the little bit of fuel that I mix and go through. Uh, it's, it's like I have a personal issue of wanting to try two-stroke oils. Um, and you know just now I'm just making an excuse for it to run wild so that aside um, yeah I mean I do need to get some more and we'll just see how it goes uh, I'll try to have the HP2 test out for y'all tomorrow uh, don't totally know if it's going to happen It's I, it has been busy over here but thanks for watching. If you've got any other comments, concerns, questions, leave them in there. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, and also check out... Check out Richard Flagg. He's got an oil testing series. He's doing it in chainsaws. I've seen him in the comments in uh, this series. Yeah, he's doing it before me. Uh, so, you know, if, if you get two people testing the same thing and both are getting similar results with the same product, it's probably going to be a, uh, it's probably going to be consistent across the board. You know, if I have something that tests totally different than him, uh, you know, might reach out and ask some questions and see if two brains can figure it out instead of one also red bull 661 that channel tests a bunch of tree monkey saws and he tested did a bunch of oil testing like years ago so if you want to dive into the youtube archive that one's uh, that series has been out uh, even before mr flags novice lumberjack had one talking about his choice of two stroke oil and he you know, he makes a good point, like, hey, 
two-stroke oil in your fuel is better than no no two-stroke oil in your fuel. Yeah, just make sure it's mixed right and get after it. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not trying to prove anything, not trying to disprove anything. I'm just, it is pure curiosity on my end why, to see how all of this stuff performs. Uh, you know, the hundreds and thousands and millions of people that run whatever and don't have problems. Then there, uh, dragonfly75.com, that is a, I think he's, you know, like motorized bicycles or something. He also has a YouTube channel, and there's a lot of good oil information on that site as well. So, sorry for being long, drawn out, and not having a lot going on, but I just figured I'd touch base with all y'all, uh, and probably start this in like a I think you can start like a series on your channel or something that's probably this will probably be the first video in there to give a rundown of things before getting into how it all works and I have some other notes but just disregard that we're gonna be covering that in another video